a las vegas so fancy everyone who goes to vegas usually stays down here and dresses up all nice and gets free drinks handed to them by attractive bartenders las vegas is known worldwide for its over-the-top glamorous strip you think this whole place was like this if you didn't leave your hotel but most of las vegas is not this most of las vegas is very poor and run down in this video we're going to explore the true ugly side of las vegas a lot of this desert city is pretty beat up and poor and not what you see on tv or from the view of your hotel room now the consensus from the data and from the people i know who live in las vegas is that there's three main parts of las vegas that are the worst parts of town they're here an area way up in the northeast fringe of town a part of town on the north end off of lake mead boulevard and a neighborhood on the fringe of downtown near jerry's nugget there's a fourth area near the stratosphere right off the strip that was actually the worst and I found it so dangerous and intimidating that I'm going to do a whole separate video on this neighborhood because it was that bad. But for the most part, we're going to be spending time in North Las Vegas, which is the most rundown and dangerous part of any other area in the state of Nevada. We're going to begin up here near Nellis Air Force Base, which is so far out of town that you're actually on the edge of the desert. The area we'll be visiting is north of Lake Mead Boulevard near the Sunrise Vista Golf Course. You could call this the northeast part of town. Now, North Las Vegas is the most dangerous part of the whole state of Nevada. There really aren't too many good neighborhoods in North Las Vegas. And when you're out here, you have to watch your back all the time. There's vandalism, burglaries, mail theft, assaults, domestic disputes, and gunshots up here in this part of town all the time. A lot of people say the police response time way up here is really slow as well. Ironically, this is also where the TV show Cops shot a lot of episodes. This is the most violent place in the state per capita, this part of town up here. If you lived here for a year, you'd have a 1 in 115 chance of being the victim of violence. 1 in 5 residents here never finished high school, and 1 in 7 people up here lives in poverty. Up here, it's going to be far more affordable though. Homes like this go for about $200,000, but it's hard to find an affordable part of town up here that's not run down and where crime isn't sky high. A recent report by a local news station listed some of the murders which happened way up here in this part of town this year, and the list was very long. Bodies found in duffel bags, bodies found wrapped in sheets, murder suicides, people stabbed at major intersections, people strangled at major intersections, road rage murders, People dying over stolen cell phones and dead kids. It's terrible here, folks, and very sad. How do we get to this point? What's wrong with our society? Is generational welfare partly to blame? How bad would things be here if we didn't provide welfare benefits to people? How desperate would they be if they were actually, actually broke?
So now we're going to head into the next worst neighborhood in the Las Vegas metro area. The area we're heading to is here, a few miles west from the first part of town we just saw. Again, right off of Lake Mead Boulevard. This neighborhood's also where a lot of crime happens and where poverty is really bad. Maybe these parts of town are so bad because people are- Whoa, 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 Mappy, put your mask on. Okay, now what? I can't understand you, Mappy. Give people an idea, like, you've lived there for 20 years. Give people an idea on, like, the type of stuff that you will see in some bad Las Vegas hoods. Yeah, a lot of the stuff you'll see is just, uh, like, you know, a lot of homeless people walking around. Um, you know, people just kind of hanging out in the street, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, mean mugging you when you when you drive by or whatever. And, um, yeah, generally, like, maybe, like, a lot of, like, broken down cars and stuff in the road. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I guess, you know, maybe the worst neighborhoods in Vegas aren't quite as bad as some of the other ones around the country. But um, I'm sure they're probably just as dangerous in a way, like, like you know, after after the sun goes down or whatever, it's probably just as dangerous to be out there as it would be probably anywhere, <laughs> anywhere in the country. Um, yeah, the crime numbers are like super high in the places I went to. Um, but yeah, during the daytime, not a lot of people outside, lots of bars on windows, lots of bars on fences, lots of rough looking spots. But, um, you know, during the daytime, it's fine to like drive through some of these, um, places. So like it, like what kind of stuff do you hear about? Like at night, do you hear a lot of crime reports do you hear on the news? Like what, what kind of stuff goes down in some of the places I went to? So there's a lot of really weird crimes that go on here. Um, oddly, um, like during the pandemic, there was a lot of like people murdering their own children, and oddly enough, you know those those stories don't get <laughs> national attention or anything, which is crazy. But it, it, I, I noticed it, it was happening quite a few times during the pandemic. Uh, yeah, and basically, yeah, tons like a lot of like violent crime. Oddly enough. Um, you know, one weekend, I believe there was like nine stabbings in a weekend here one, one like a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, I, I would say it's probably you can attribute that stuff to like gang violence, I would say, like a lot of it or, <clears throat> you know, to like, you know, drug related stuff. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's like, you know, as much like, you know, property crime here, but probably more like violent crime, I would say. Just from what you see on the news a lot. Although, you know, they're at, like, well, I don't know, during the pandemic, crime went up so much here, too. Like, you know, there's like tons of like vehicle theft and vehicle break ins and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it pretty much all crime is up uh, quite, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crime is up across the country during the pandemic and hasn't really gone down since at all. And yeah, the, the North End, you know, north of, I guess Lake Mead Boulevard, like all that up there, it's like the most violent place in the state statistically for shootings and stabbings and assaults and all that stuff, man. It just goes off at night. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's like a lot of uh, trailer parks out there. <laughs> like not to say anything bad about uh, the people that live in trailer parks, but uh, generally, uh, yeah, the trailer parks in Vegas are not the safest places to be, I don't think. <laughs> Um, no. they're huge too. They're just like, you know, the size of small cities, basically there's whole areas that are just trailers, trailer parks here. Now in a minute, we're going to go to the third worst part of Las Vegas, but honestly, it all kind of just looks the same based on the driving I did that day. I can say this is where it's bad in the greater Las Vegas metro area. And this is where it's good. That's not a good ratio. Now, I did visit the south side of town, too, down by the Cashman Center and down by UNLV, and it's pretty bad down there, too. You just kind of get used to it. And here's an area where there's a lot of homeless people gathered. You'll see a lot of that driving around near downtown, too. But the final area we're going to go to now is in this part of town over by Jerry's Nugget. 
Again, just south of Lake Mead Boulevard. Are we seeing a pattern here? The area near Jerry's Nugget is well known by locals as being a rundown and dangerous place, but most people in Vegas haven't really gone into this neighborhood and seen what it looks like. So is crime getting worse in, in Las Vegas overall? You've been there 20 years. What was it like 20 years ago and for crime in some of the hoods I went to versus now? Uh, it's probably a lot worse now. I, well, actually, I think the reason it's worse now, like it's definitely worse now than it used to be. <clears throat> and I think that you can say that's probably from, you know, the increase in population. Um, you know, the last, I would say, you know, the last 10 years, like population's probably doubled or something. It's And a lot of the people that move here are from California and, uh, you know, like tons of like violent, like gang members and stuff from California move here. And a lot of them too, like actually during the pandemic, like there was all this violence on the strip. Uh, there was just crazy, like people, like shootings and stabbings and all kinds of crazy stuff, like way more than usual. Um, and I think a lot of that was just, you know, people from California coming here and just going crazy. You know, like California on their people ruining stuff. more stuff. Right. Yeah. Stay out of Vegas, California people. So do you ever go into any of these hoods like at all? Like, have you ever, I mean, accidentally, like, is there a reason for the average person to go in there and drive around unless you're looking for weed? Yeah, no, I've, I've been to these neighborhoods every now and then. Um, you know, sometimes you got to drive through them or whatever. And uh, I've actually, you know, lived in some not so great neighborhoods myself. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they're, you know, living there is generally, well, the neighborhood I lived in wasn't too bad, but um, yeah, there's definitely way worse neighborhoods. But, um, you know, like, you know, you see stuff on, you know, a Craigslist or whatever, or, or you, you want, you know, you want to go like maybe buy something on offer up or whatever. And uh, sometimes, you know, they're in those neighborhoods and you get to get a first hand look at, at, at what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see when you go in there to exchange goods? Well, you know, usually people, a lot of people are just kind of loitering, you know, like, um, just kind of hanging out in their front yard and stuff. Um, you know, a lot of people are just kind of pacing around in the street, maybe aimlessly, you know, like up and down the street, you know, looking crazy at everybody and like, you know, yelling at cars that drive by and stuff. I mean, that happens quite a bit too. Like somebody will be <clears throat> like crossing the street in front of you, like a crosswalk. And then they just stop and start yelling at your car all crazy. And, you know, you just got to like sit there and wait for them to, to finish or whatever. And then just like drive away. And so, um, yeah, they kind of, you know, like some of the homeless people will kind of like try to block your car too, just, you know, so they can maybe get a, get some money or whatever. Yeah. It seems like just the, the more people that go to Las Vegas, it, it does attract some of the worst, folks from the Southern California area and uh, you know, they go up there cause it's cheaper and they can get their connections for all their stuff they need and party a little bit. And then pretty soon they haven't left for years and they're just part of your community again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They come here on vacation and then just never leave for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think a lot of people from the East coast too move here as well like you know seeing a lot of people with uh, new york accents running around here so um I, I think the most people that move here from california and new york for the most part yeah for sure like the la area southern california right. yep so is like what are they trying to do do you hear about like are they trying to beef up police to try to get you know quell this do they even care i mean can they keep up with it some communities have just kind of had enough of it and uh, they're cracking down, but many of them don't have the resources to do anything about it. I mean, that's probably one of the better aspects of Las Vegas. Like, like law enforcement here doesn't mess around like they do in other places like California or whatever. Like, you know, they, they won't really let the homeless people get 
kind of a toehold like they do in kind of like, you know, setting up tent cities and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, like if you go to the strip, like, you know, they won't let uh, people like bug tourists and stuff on the strip. If they see you like selling so stuff or, um, you know, busking on the strip, uh, for the most part, they'll like ask you to leave. Um, I don't know. I, I think overall, like law enforcement in Vegas is actually pretty good, like as far as like them keeping control of things. But, you know, uh, you know, some neighborhoods you just, you know, you can't really stop people from <laughs> like, uh, you know, murdering each other or whatever they want to do. You know, that's kind of like on them. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. <laughs> Are you going to stick around in Vegas for a while? Are you are you are you, are you going to be a Vegas for life guy? Are you thinking about getting out of there? Yeah, I'll probably stay here a while. Um, yeah, I've been here so long already that you know it's kind of my home in a way. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think you know maybe someday I'll leave and you know explore other areas for sure. I'm always you know checking out other places like you know other states and stuff and. You know, you know, even like, you know, other countries too, for sure. Yeah, there's, there. I mean, Vegas has changed a lot since the last time I actually spent a little bit of time there. Like it's, there's large parts of that town that are just, you know, had, had their time. Um, and uh, I can see why, you know, a lot of people want to go there. There's lots of land, lots of cheap homes. Yeah, that, that was kind of the draw for Las Vegas is, yeah, like a lot of cheap, like, rent and properties and stuff. It's not quite that way anymore. It's still cheaper than California by quite a bit, yeah. but yeah, it's definitely it's like definitely half. Up there. Yeah, about half. Yeah. It depends. So, there, I mean, so like it was like 230, 240 for the homes in the neighborhoods I went to, which is about where you'll find low income for Southern California. So it's like kind of on par, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just large parts of town that are all jacked up. And yeah. I went down to UNLV. Um, I checked out the Cashman center. I just drove all around and uh, saw like a lot of homeless people. Not as many as I thought. I know there's a lot in the tunnels. I didn't, wasn't going to go down there. Um, yeah. The tunnels, yeah, it's where yeah, like there's like a big drainage ditches and stuff by the strip where they, a lot of them congregate. Uh, but yeah, most mm -hmm. of them had to go in those drainage ditches so you can't even see them. Yeah, and I wouldn't recommend going in there. No, I mean, they're pretty cool. I've seen other guys have gone down there and interviewed them. They seem to be pretty cool. Just take pizza and 20 bucks and just chow them for a little bit. They're not, they're not going to like do anything bad. Most right, of yeah, them. it's not like they're vampires or anything. <laughs> no. It's pretty clear that a lot of Vegas is in a bad place. But are elected leaders here going to help make these people better or lower crime or raise their standard of living? Probably not, if they haven't by now. If you want to get rid of crime and clean your community up, you're going to have to do it yourself. Las Vegas is growing super fast and there's some really nice parts of town. But most of the average people live in areas that are falling into disrepair. And that is a shame. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better. Because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.